this is Megan and Stacy with another What We're Cooking and Eating Now bonus episode. In addition to our regular weekly episodes twice a month, we give you a real-time rundown of what we're cooking for our families. In each of these episodes, we'll walk you all the way through one recipe and then list five others. All in, you get six easy weeknight dinner ideas that we've tested. You can use our ideas as inspiration or literally turn them into your meal plan for next week. We share the links for all the recipes mentioned in our free community where you can join by going to didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. All you have to do to get to that free area is enter your email, which we keep private, and look out for our post with the what we're cooking and needing now details. Ooh, and I should add, we recently set up a new system for sharing these links. They all live in one place all together. And when you sign up, it should be at the very top, pinned to the very top of the message board. So they're even easier to find now. Stacey, you are in a transition week. Like this is the last little bit of summer slash the start of school for your crew. Yeah, I think this airs on the first day of school. So yeah. when this so airs, been cooking? I'm going to be shifting into a totally different kind of cooking, I bet. I know, I know. And we we talked recently about like how I'm like full, like my kids are back to school. I'm also in a like comfort cooking season. And so I'm like fully leaned into more fall food. But you've still been cooking a lot of like really great summer food. Yes. So I'm curious. Where are you? What's happening? Let's what are you talk cooking? about it. So I'm going to admit, and I hope it's not annoying to people, I'm only supposed to talk through one recipe. They're all very easy. I might do, like, instead of going into deep detail on one, a kind of very briefly walk through a bunch of them because I have no links. All of this stuff is stuff I made up this week. Great. Okay. So the first thing I made... I call them kofta style sliders. That's just like an easy shorthand to kind of describe. I combine ground beef and ground lamb. I put a salt, pepper, chopped mint, chopped parsley because herbs are so, have been so abundant. I've been like overcome with herbs in a good way. Um, And then that's it, a little bit of lemon zest and I make little sliders. So it's not really kofta at all, but they're also not just like burger sliders. Right. And I serve those with pita that I throw on the grill as well while the kofta sliders are grilling, and then tzatziki. And in this case, I bought, it was store-bought tzatziki. I'm very picky about tzatziki just because it's something that's just been regular on my table ever since growing up. You know, you have some things that you're like, oh, it's so easy to throw together, but that's more because it's such a like regular thing in your home. So I get that it might not be easy for everybody, but for me it is. But there is one brand called Kava, which they have a fast casual chain in New York City. I don't know if it's nationwide. I think it might be. And then they have some packaged foods. I get kava tzatziki at Whole Foods, and it's delicious. It meets the standard. So we had that, and then I made on the side something called spanico. Well, I'm saying it with like my English accent, spanicorizo. My mom says it differently. I'm probably it's probably. Wait, how does your mom say it? I I can't. So sometimes when I have to like stop and concentrate, (laughs) uh, spanicorizo versus spanicorizo. So those are the two ways. I had to okay. like, everybody can't it's see. It's very subtle difference. Yeah. You yeah. have to look away. I did. I had to look away and memory. like focus and put like my Greek, like my kids call my mom Yaya, which is not like yeah. I grew up calling her my grandmother Yaya. In Greece, they say Yaya. So it's like these little subtle American accent things. Anyway, that is a recipe I will find and link to, but it's basically like you cook, um, rice with spinach and some like like quickly caramelized onions and a ton of dill and it's a really delicious rice side dish yeah why do i feel like you've shared a recipe for it whether it's a link or we have a didn't i just feed you recipe for it we've de- we definitely talked about it when we did that like little series on rice yeah i make it a lot yeah so i'll dig it up if it's i don't think i did a recipe for us Maybe I did, actually. We'll look it up. I'll add it. Yes. Anyway, so okay. the kofta sliders, a little pita bread and tzatziki, and uh, the spani chorizo. That was one thing. It was like my little Mediterranean night. 
But see, that feels like a little, that sounds to me like a little comfort cooking, which is like the thing you need in a transition, but still like fresh summer, summer. You flavors. know, I'm going to, in some ways. I'm going to admit that that was a night that we had guests. So okay. the rice, spani chorizo, I feel like you can eat at room temperature. So I made the rice ahead of time and it was just kind of like, you know, a few hours before people came and sat on the stove. And then I prepped the sliders. I just had them all ready to go shaped on a sheet pan. And then, you know, I just threw them on the grill with the bread and the tzatziki was store-bought. So when people came, it was just throwing a bunch of stuff on the grill, like uncovering the rice and fluffing it again, and then opening a package of Brilliant. tzatziki. So it was a really good entertaining meal. And then if you really wanted to ratchet it up, if this was like a casual entertaining, you could just add a mezza plate, like with store-bought stuffed grape leaves and tomatoes and like some sliced feta and olive oil and, and just put that out as well. And I feel like that's a meal that feels really nice for entertaining. Yeah. Like it feels fancy and it's still the only thing I've added to this like easy routine is putting together a big mezza plate. Okay. I love, I'm like, this is brilliant. I'm stealing that idea. Do it. This is what I do every time we have a we're Steal cooking it. now. Whatever Cece's cooking, that's what I'm cooking. Okay. So another day we made grilled chicken sandwiches for lunch. So that was really easy. I just like rubbed the chicken with like a spice rub. I had like a another Greek <laughs> version that has like some orange peel and lemon peel and oregano and all that kind of good stuff. And I threw that on the grill. I warmed some buns and then I put out like mayonnaise, Chick-fil-A sauce, sliced tomatoes, onion, lettuce, pickles, and everyone kind of made their own. So that was really yummy and easy. The piece de resistance, if you will, was that we made a salad that I was so excited about. Tomatoes, peaches cut into wedges with very thinly sliced red onion and very thinly sliced Fresno chilies for a little bit of spice. It was so good because chilies and peppers are really in season now. They're all over. There's so many different kinds of peppers at the farmer's market right now. And then I just dressed the whole thing with what I've dressed so many of my summer salads with. Sherry vinegar, lemon juice, lemon zest, crunchy Maldon salt, good olive oil, and a dash of fish sauce. And that's not a dressing that I even shake on. I mean, shake together. Like I literally drizzle, like I lay things out on a platter in a bowl, and I just drizzle those things on and toss it. And it's so good. Uh, you have an Instagram reel yeah. that we can link to of the dressing. You did it on melon in this instance, like on Instagram. That was a little bit slightly different because I put chili crisp oh, on, okay. on melon. It was like uh, fish sauce, lemon, lemon zest, olive oil, and chili crisp on cantaloupe. That was insane too. Yeah. We've been eating a lot of that. Yeah. Spicy fruit. You can't go wrong. It's Ooh. like it is the time in the season for it. Okay. One more Meal, One more Phyllis. thing. I was still grilling, still summer grilled pizzas, bought the pizza dough. Um, I made a plain pie for the boys because that's what Oliver requested. And the other one I took like canned green salsa and I had like the pizza cheese too. And I had some green chilies. Oh, I had induya sausage. That's what I had, mm. which was it's like chorizo enough. So it was just green chilies, like actual green, like salsa, pizza blend, induya. And then when I took it off the grill, I topped it with cilantro. And it was okay, great. You have to though, like back up a little bit because sure. you said a plain pie for the boys, which like in my mind, if I'm doing grilled pizza, I'm thinking it's like more margarita style yeah. pizza. But are you saying you did that or like more like classic pizza shop pizza sauce? And pr shredded, pre-shredded oh, yeah. cheese. No, like or... pizza sauce and pre-shredded. That was okay. that. And like <laughs> jar and you of said pizza, pizza sauce. Pizza cheese. Because I write oh. pizza cheese like on my grocery list. And Brian's like, what is pizza cheese? And I'm like, it's literally like the Italian blend yes. that we use for like making bagel pizzas. Or like sometimes we'll do grill, like grill, pizza grilled cheese, which is just like pizza sauce yeah. and cheese like in bread. Uh, so it's like one of those staple things, but it's not the same pizza that I would use if I was like grilling pizza. I might do like fresh mozzarella no. and then finish it with Parmesan. Mm -hmm. But no, but for the boys, no way. that ain't it. We did pizza cheese, which is different than pizza mozzarella because it's a blend yes. and it's a little bit sharper. I think it works better on lasagnas and baked ziti's and 
pizzas. Yes. No, it was like a pizza just on the grill instead of in my oven. <laughs> Literally the jarred sauce I now and have pizza. Is that we there's like, didn't I just feed you pizza cheese? Like I <laughs> Make it. Let's make that like, happen. Yes. You know, like Kraft or Tillamook. They're like, it's the Italian six cheese Italian blend. They just call it what it is. You guys. It's pizza, pizza cheese. cheese. <laughs> Whole Foods calls it pizza cheese. Or like calls Do it shredded. Okay. It's a pizza blend. They have a pizza blend. Okay. I'm going to go when I look for your tzatziki. Yes. Also at my whole, the Whole Foods it's near us. Yes. Um, and I think we just had a... Oh, I know what we did. I also put corn on my green pizza. Hello. Yes. Major omission. So it was the green salsa, the green chilies, corn, and duya, and pizza cheese. Uh, and I think we just had a salad with that. Like there was no major vegetable thought there. I'm fully distracted because every time someone mentions corn right now, I probably by next week, by the time this airs, like it won't be a trend anymore. But there is that like Instagram and TikTok audio of the kid who's talking about corn and someone remixed it into a song. And it's like, it's corn. I haven't seen it. lump of knobs. It's got the juice. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to go look for it. I haven't been online very much lately. I know I want to see it. So I'm missing the corn. And then you can share your corn pizza with the audio that's like the only there's a bunch of people trying to use it for like other trends and different niches but like i feel very strongly that this is our time to shine yeah. like people in the food world <laughs> we get this trending audio and no one else should be using it i love farmers it. farmers can use it i'll allow it, I'll allow it. <laughs> okay that's what i ate what did you eat this week okay this is such a great and funny and different vibe not like in a a very serious way but patty catalana who's like my you know my in real life bff and she's been on the show she was like oh i did like she was talking about how busy their one of their weekends were with a sports schedule she's like yeah i just like put a pork shoulder in the slow cooker and i was like oh i should definitely do that um so i bought a pork shoulder and then i used Jenna Helwig's pulled pork sandwich recipe, which is in her book, Bare Minimum Dinners. And she also suggests the like slaw recipe, which is really just like bagged slaw, you know, the pre-shredded kind of combination of like red and green cabbage and carrots. Yes, totally. With a vinegar of your choice and like salt and pepper and a pinch of sugar. Yeah. And we literally ate that as sandwiches. And then we have leftovers in the fridge to either continue to eat as sandwiches or like make into quesadillas or tacos or something else later this week by request by Brian's request, which he like very rarely requests things. So anytime he does, I'm like, yes, I will absolutely do that. I made meatloaf, (laughs) which like, it's still hot here. It's still like in the nineties in Chattanooga. I love meatloaf too. This time I used Ina Garden's recipe I've made for meatloaf. Before, yeah. And she calls for caramelized, like cooking like three cups of onions. I had caramelized onions f- in the freezer. So I just used those up instead. And it was, it was really good. Like I used her recipe. I bought the meatloaf mix. You know, your grocery store sometimes you can get, it's like uh, ground beef, ground pork. Yeah. All in one. That's what I did. And it was really delicious. I recently bookmarked a meatloaf recipe because I've been doing like little home decorating things upstate. I started following, I think I already mentioned this, Chris Loves Julia. And he, I guess, is a cook. I don't know his background. I've not really looked into it, to be honest. But she, I think, is like all the things like gluten free, grain free, dairy free. So I didn't really pay attention to the recipes. I just felt like that didn't really apply to me. That's not why I'm here. But he shared a meatloaf and the vegetable base that he created was really interesting and delicious. How he like built flavor in a meatloaf that was free of all the allergens. It was looked really good. And he got me really excited about trying it, even though like I had no need to go out of my way to make mine like free of allergens. I know we're supposed to like be short here, be brief with these what we're cooking, but like I need to know what were the vegetables. And then you have to link to it with all the I'll link to it. We'll we'll let people look at it. Caramelized onions and meatloaf is just all around like a hell yes. They're so good. Even my kids who like do not like onions ate the meatloaf without complaint. Awesome. And that's a big deal. We ate it with grits and green beans. Nice. And everyone loved it. 
I mean, my kids don't love grits that much. Just a great disappointment to me. And then finally, we had a night this week where we had like an event right after school. And then I had to come home and make dinner really quickly. And I was just reminded how great black bean and cheese burritos are. And then literally like the next day, you know, if you get the New York Times cooking email, they were like, black bean and cheese burritos. And I was like, yes, it's the time. It they're is the in time your, of year where everyone needs to be rem- They're in my brain. We're just, everyone needs to be reminded, like that's a legit dinner. And we had it with like raw corn and chopped cherry tomatoes with a little dressing and called that the salad. Delicious. So good. I want to add that to my meal plan for next week now. I feel like you should like first day back to school. I don't know. So good. Do you do something celebratory on the first day back to school at all? No, not so much. The kids aren't celebrating. <laughs> they're older. They're like, this I know. sucks. <laughs> and then they're tired. You're always like, oh, we could go like go, go out for dinner or something on the first night. Like that's always what Brian wants to do. And then I'm like, oh, I was thinking that for Friday, but then like, you know, with the 10th grader, like he's so excited to be home and in the city. Like he's definitely not coming home from school on no, Friday night until late. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So I don't think so. So there you go. There you go. That's, that's not good happening. though. It's a sign of like him being out with friends and healthy. Exactly. Exactly. Delicious food. Hopefully this inspires everybody. This bi-monthly series is thanks in part to the generous support of our Din I Just Feed You supporting members. We love you guys so much. Huge shout out and thank you to them. You can find out more about becoming a supporting member at didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. And hey, guys, if it's not the right time to support us, we get it. You can just support us by listening or sharing this episode or leaving us a rating and review. And don't forget that you can also just join the free section of our community where we will include links to everything we mentioned, not just from this What We're Cooking and Eating Now, but from all of them. All of them. A huge thank you to our producer, Samantha Getzik. Thanks for listening. Stay sane and well-fed. Until next time. 